in Crow Park for the announcement of the new partnership between the LGFA and Oracle and also the launch of the Fitter Woman app and we're delighted to be joined by the TG Carr All-Star winning and Player of the Year for 2017, uh, Dublin's Noel Healy. Uh, Noel, maybe we can start by uh, just giving the viewers um, a little bit of information about exactly what is Fitter Woman. Yeah, um, so it's an app that allows for women involved in sport, any level, be it at an elite kind of a level, intercounty level, um, or you know, kind of just the person who goes for runs day to day, just to be able to kind of track their menstrual cycle, um, and then it just gives it's kind of a really good resource of information, um, just kind of information physiologically, just about kind of what's happening to your body itself during those pre during those kind of times, those different phases, um, and also it gives information just about kind of what um type of exercise you kind of benefit most from so be it you know at a certain stage you benefit more from endurance type of training or you know if you've kind of adapted your training to benefit more from a strength training um just to maximize that um also from a nutrition point of view it kind of gives information as well kind of what type of foods you should be eating um just to kind of make sure to kind of keep it uh, on track and on top of symptoms and also just kind of fatigue and things like that as well so it's just a really good resource just to i suppose kind of give you a little bit of empowerment just to be able to to track and map everything um, and then knowledge as well just to make sure that it's not affecting your performance and then also just use it to get the most out of your performance as well. And is this just aimed at, at athletes or, or, or all women? Um, well look I suppose you kind of want to and encourage all women to be involved in sports and to be involved in activities so I suppose in that way you'd hope it would go for everybody but um, yeah look if, if it's, it's mostly I think uh, for people who are involved in, in sport um, and be able to kind of make sure that your menstrual cycle isn't impeding on that way um, and just to kind of I suppose normalize the conversation around it a little bit and just get a little bit more of information out there. Yeah I suppose it is about normalizing it it isn't a subject that says uh, you know really spoken about. No it and it's ridiculous that it isn't like um, I don't know what it is about it that there's kind of a taboo or whatever it is people are just awkward about it but like you know it has such an impact on people's lives you know for a quarter of your life it's going to affect it um for a quarter of the time so you may as well kind of make you know sure that you've got correct information about it you understand what's going on um and you kind of have control of it and it is quite strange actually because it is just a natural process it's a natural thing that happens Absolutely, you know yeah. why there is such a taboo about it is it, it, and nowadays it's still very strange yeah yeah and hopefully that will change and i think you know if you kind of have just start a conversation about it um that will just kind of filter down and hopefully it will kind of normalize it i know it probably has definitely for my generation and kind of when you get a little bit older it kind of isn't as I suppose an awkward a subject but um, I know for teenagers it probably is just kind of something they kind of don't feel like they're that comfortable in talking about so hopefully this will help. And um, you, you've put yourself right behind this uh, you're one of the ambassadors uh, why, why did you uh, you know why did you do that? Yeah well, I suppose they kind of uh, approached me and just gave me a bit of information about it um, first of all I obviously you know quite an interest in, in physiology um, and you know nutrition as well uh, so from that point of view I think you know it was really interesting just to, to see that um, the kind of the adaptations that you can make to your training and and the reasons why behind that so that kind of hooked me in initially and then I think just those reasons behind I think for something as silly and as natural as that to be impeding young girls and playing sport or to stop them from playing sport in general is just ridiculous um, so to be able to kind of give that empowerment back and to start that conversation is really important. And uh, it, it is an app that's available, I take it, both on Google Store and the, the Apple Store. Um, how easy is the app to use? Really easy, yeah. yeah. You just download it, uh, key in your, de your, your details, and then it gets set up automatically for you and it tracks everything for you and just kind of gives that information um, in a really nice interface. Okay, um, um, look, before we let you go, uh, I can't... Um, not mention the upcoming uh, Leinster final on Sunday week against the uh, Westmead. Yeah. Uh, players are all back uh, after um, a couple of weeks of club duty. Uh, yeah. There's been a, a fair break between the uh, league final and the Leinster final mm. uh, inter-county wise. Um, how's, uh, how's preparations been going? Yeah, great. Yeah, I think everybody's nice and fresh after kind of getting back to their clubs. Um, it's always great to kind of get that game time. Um, just to be kind of back with your home club, back with your, your players. And um, I know it kind of gives a lot of people the opportunity to play and kind of regain a little bit of confidence um, and even just get a bit of fitness in as well um, in some really tough matches so from that point it was brilliant and it kind of just gave everybody a little bit of, of a freshness to come back and a bit of a clean slate as well um, so training yeah we've been putting in kind of a little bit of hard work over the last um, week and just getting ready to, to gear up for a good championship but I know that we're all really looking forward to Leinster final I think for us Leinster final is a really really special day 
Um, you know, it's kind of always in the height of summer, uh, just when championship is kind of getting into full flow. So something that we always really look forward to. Um, and we've been lucky enough that it's been a special day for us over the past few years. So, um, yeah, we're, we're really focused and we're kind of hoping that we can make it a kind of another special occasion as well. Yeah, I'm talking about that sort of gap again. I know a lot of people have, have, have been making remarks about it because it is a big gap between mm. the end of the league and, the, and you know the, the Leinster final. Yeah. Um, but it, as you said, it does bring a freshness back to the players to maybe get a break from the inter-county scene, the Absolutely, setup, the training, yeah. and just get back to you know club level. And you know, I'm not saying it's any easier. Mm. You know, you you had plenty of championship games. I, I know your own club, St Bridget's, are in the semi-final of the club championship. Mm -hmm. I seen the draw uh, last night. Uh, yeah. Yourself and Thomas Davis are meeting. Yeah, round two. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I, as I say, that, that sort of freshness is, is probably good for the players as well, just Absolutely, to get that yeah. break from what is, you know, a, a certainly a fishbowl when it comes to, you know, inter-county. Yeah, I think the break has been, we've had kind of long, nearly six, seven week breaks before, and we've just been with Involve with the county set up, and it's been long kind of to have that long a wait of just training away without a match. Um, mentally, it can be kind of tough to motivate yourself, but to get that break, even just to give the club our time to the clubs, to be able to get a proper run with the clubs, and to be able to give the kind of the championship the respect that it deserves as well to kind of get it run off at a proper time with proper you know time for recovery in between as well and for teams to kind of get to work on tactics and plays and things like that as well so from that point of view it worked absolutely brilliantly i think you know maybe you could even dedicate a little bit of more time to the club um, for to be able to run off at a nice time of the year when the weather's good where everybody wants to be playing football um, which is brilliant and it means that you're not kind of getting dragged between two people two two teams you're not trying to be fresh for two teams and it means that kind of you know you're not going to put yourself at risk of injury because you're you're overloading yourself too much so we had a good conversation with the clubs kind of halfway through the year this year and it seems to have worked really really well yeah i suppose it is about getting that balance right as well you know for player welfare for you know you know to avoid injuries and all that sort Absolutely, of stuff as well yeah, yeah we all want to play with our clubs um and we all want to be able to give our best and nobody wants to get injured um and you know nobody wants anybody to be injured so from that point of view, it just makes a lot of sense to manage it that way. Yeah, and I suppose like the intercounty se season tends to get dragged out a little bit as well. Like competitions are are, are run off a, a very long period of time, mm -hmm. and I suppose it, it then ends up with very little time for the clubs. Absolutely. You yeah. know, and I think maybe if uh, if they ran these competitions a little bit, you know, quicker, yeah. it, it would open up a hell of a lot more um, weekends for you know clubs. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that just makes more sense. I mean, we not asking to play less matches definitely not you know we just kind of want to shorten it down and then kind of give the clubs more opportunity for us to play more more matches with them but i think this year like obviously there's definitely room to tweak to tweak it and to move around with it but it seems so far to have worked pretty nicely now and there's teams that have a nice summer of um training to look forward to um to prepare for a championship so it's just great and looking towards the lesser final, uh, it's Westmead uh, yet again. I yeah. think this is the third year. Is it fourth, third? Year. fourth year yeah. is it that yeah. you played together? Yeah. You played against each other. Uh, Dublin have come out on top, uh, and on all of those. And um, but you met each other in the league earlier on, and uh, that was a tough encounter Absolutely. on Westmead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were seven points down at one stage of that game, um, and they looked really impressive throughout the entire league campaign. Um, they they're stalwarts. Uh, you know, I know Jenny Rogers came back this year. Um, Laura Walsh and Fiona Claffey obviously play club football in Dublin, so we know them quite well. Um, and they're they're brilliant. You know, they're 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 big players. They're really solid players as well. But they, you know, have a lot of younger players come up who seem to be performing really well and seem to be relishing kind of their opportunity to play against the bigger teams. Um, so yeah, hopefully it'll be a, a really really good game again this year. And um, you know the the Leinster Championship I'm saying is a special day, so it'd be great to kind of um you know give a good game. I suppose that performance from Westmead, um, you know, it, it, not that Dublin needed a reminder, it was a reminder how tough that game is actually going to be. In some Absolutely, way. yeah. You know, physically they're a really imposing team. Um, they're great players. They've some really fast, good ball carriers. Some really good shooters. Um, they've an excellent forward line. So definitely nothing to be kind of taken for granted at all. Um, and you know that's what you want. You want a really tough game. You want to pitch yourself against the best. So really looking forward to it. And just looking forward uh, beyond that again, um, the new championship format, uh, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, we were saying if it wasn't for that, we'd only have four games with Dublin this year. So this kind of gives us a chance to play six inter-county games, which is brilliant. Um, you get to play more teams against the rest of the country as well. Some really, really tough games. Um, so really looking forward to it. I think it'll be brilliant. And look, just looking again at the Leicester Championship, there's only two senior sides in it. Um, yourselves in Westmead, uh, I'm sure the competition could really do with a few more senior teams from, from, from around the province. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, you'd, ideally, you'd have a situation where ladies football is strong enough in every county for every county to be to com- to be competing at senior. Um, a lot of the them seem to be making good strides. Um, like I know Wicklow seems to be having a fantastic season there in the intermediate final. Wexford as well won Division Three this year, up to Division Two. So hopefully things are, things are coming coming along. West Mead as well, kind of staying up to Division One as well. Will strengthen things. So um, yeah, hopefully it will kind of start going strength to strength. I think um, it seems to be getting quite competitive about underage as well. So hopefully that will start transferring through to the senior. Yeah, and the new, the new um, you know, the new format for the, for for the All Ireland series probably helps Dublin as well because as you said, you would have only had one game. Mm. You know, if that wasn't around, and you'd be going straight into a quarter final, you know, probably undercooked a little. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. Look, matches are kind of where you test yourself out. Um, you know, it's where you, it's fine. Everything can be going well in, in training when everybody's on the same hymn sheet. But in the heat of battle, things will change. So, um, you kind of want to get as much championship time under your belt as you can. Um, before the big games come around. So, yeah, it looks more matches can always be a good thing. And uh, look, Dublin are installed again as favourites to um win the Brenda Martin Cup again. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of good sides around. What sides have ha- have sort of impressed you so far? Um, like this, it's wide open to be honest. I think uh, Galway, I think always are a team that you kind of need to, um, kind of have respect for whenever you're playing them. Underage, they've had some phenomenal success. They've brilliant players. Um, they like you could see even in the final rounds of the Division One Championship how close they got. Donegal racking up big scores as usual. They're probably the best forward line in the country. Um, Cork, can never write them off. Mayo always going to be there and thereabouts. Do you know like Armagh? There's just some ser- serious quality teams around and such good quality players. It's it's absolutely brilliant to see the sport, the strength that it is. So I think it's going to be a brilliant championship. I can't wait to even watch some of the games that are going to be on for the round robin. I think there's some seriously tasty encounters coming up um, and even the provincial finals I don't think you can call them at all um, so yeah no it's exciting times I think well Noel thanks for joining us no uh, very best of luck on Sunday thanks week thanks very much thank you